another war at the shore. It's the $3.7 million Borgata Poker Classic here on the World Poker Tour. The World Poker Tour is a series of 17 international poker tournaments featuring the biggest games, Whoa! the greatest players, and the largest payouts on the planet. In Atlantic City, six players, $3.7 million. It's a multi-million dollar battle on the boardwalk here on the World Poker Tour. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the World Poker Tour. I'm Mike Sexton, along with Vince Van Patten, and we are back in Atlantic City for the inaugural Borgata Poker Classic. Well, Mike, it is good to be back at the Glamour's Borgata in Atlantic City. You know, if you ask most of the players, what do you think of Borgata, they wouldn't say they just like the place. They would say they love it. I mean, what's not to love? It is incredible here, and that's why we had to have a second event. But let's talk about the players. 381 players all put up a cool $10,000 each to make a total prize pool of about $3.7 million dollars and the winner is going to take home a very life-changing close to 1.2 million dollars that's that's not life-changing money that is address changing money that's right mike okay the brigada poker classic i think is destined to become an instant classic okay let's move over to six chip position amnon felipe they call him guts that's right guts has eight hundred and twenty thousand dollars he's from new york city let's see if he'll do it moving over to fifth chip position is Stuart patterson he is from boca raton florida and you know what he's got one million sixty thousand dollars worth of chips and he's got some family in scotland rooting him home so he's got men in skirts rooting for him tonight oh boy starting out in fourth chip position tonight with 1.3 million in chips is john d'agostino from egg harbor new jersey jay dags as they call him is a 23 year old poker pro he's making his third final table appearance on the world poker tour tonight let's see if he can capture that first wpt title in third chip position tonight with 1.6 million dollars in chips is an amateur player josh spiegelman out of secaucus new jersey he got into this tournament by winning a satellite and if lady less continues to shine on josh he could go to the winner's circle. Okay, moving over to second chip position, we've seen this young superstar on the World Poker Tour numerous times, even last week, finishing second. Michael, the grinder, is Rocky. He is back. He's amazing. This guy can really play. Disregard the grinder thing. He doesn't grind at the poker table. This guy crushes. I'll tell you one thing. He grinds out the cash here on the World Poker Tour. No doubt about that. As does our chip leader tonight, Eric E. Dog Lindgren, a former two-time winner on the World Poker Tour, former WPT Player of the Year. He's starting out with $2.6 million tonight this final table and Vince if he wins here he'll tie Gus Hansen as the winningest player out on the world poker tour with three wins with his chip count I give you e dog a great shot to do it tonight just incredible six players at the Borgata Poker Classic let's go down to the felt we're here at the Borgata Poker Classic let's shuffle up and deal well the first lady of poker Linda Johnson gives us those famous words shuffle up and deal Let's talk about the structure a little bit. The antes will be $3,000 each. The blinds are going to be fifteen and 30000 The first action is going to be on Eric Lingren. Looks down the queen four off suit and folds. Now the grinder with an eight seven of hearts, a suited connector. And I hate this. Look at this. He caps his cards. Well, here we go, Vince. He's going to attack on hand number one. Oh, yeah. That's why he's the grinder. Makes it 85000 to go. Dags goes out with king five. Josh Spiegelman goes out as well. And now Amnon Felipe with a wired pair of three says, I'm going to call it. Well, with small pairs, you like to see flops. Try to hit a set where you might bust somebody. But Stuart Patterson has ace ten. Well, it looks like he's getting out chips also, Vince. Oh, yeah. He's got 30,000 out there, cost him 55,000 more to call. As you can see, Stewart was in an accident at 17 years old, was paralyzed, but doesn't stop him from playing poker. Yep. Poker professional for three years now. He's got ace 10. There's a pair of threes up against the grinders, eight seven of hearts on the very first hand. Here comes a flop. Flop is king, queen, eight with two spades. Amnon checks. Stewart checks. The grinder picks up a pair of eights, but he checks as well. Well, he checks bottom pair here. Free round. There's the turn. It's a four of hearts. Well, this gives the grinder a flush draw to go along with his two eights. Amnon checks. And look at this. Stewart Patterson is reaching for chips. Vance, he only has ace high, but everybody checked on the flop. He's going to make a stab at this pot right now. It does appear to be that. See how much he's going to bet here. 
Yeah, looks like he's pushing out 110,000. Right into the grinder, who has a four flush and a pair of eights. I think it's 110. Yeah, he's got some type of hand and a drawing hand, Vince. See how he plays it. He does call the 110,000. And Alnam with the pair of threes goes away. So going into the river, Stewart taking a shot here. He would love to hit the inside straight. Well, an ace or a ten would also give him the lead here. But let's see what happens. Comes the river card to seven of spade. Oh, boy. The grinder has made two pair. Stewart hitting absolutely nothing. But Vince, look at this. He is reaching for chips here. He doesn't care that the grinder is a star on the tour, that he finished second last week, that he's a former WPT champion. Stuart Patterson's going for chips here, and he is betting. Yeah, 135,000. 27 year old betting with absolute zip and pip here. Into the grinder. Well, the grinder's made two pair. I'd be shocked if he would lay this down. And he does make the call. So right Stewart is not going to like it. But Vince, give the guy credit. Notice what happens if the grinder doesn't make two pair on the river. Yeah, he goes out. He's going to have a very tough call to make with just two eights in that spot, and I believe he was giving the hand up. So you got to give a lot of credit to Stuart Patterson for the playing online five years ago. He's a professional poker player for three years. Nice try on the very first pot, but it's all about the grinder right now, taking his first pot. And we saw the grinder finish second last week at Tunica, and the rush looks like it is continuing. Well, Vince, we've sure got a lot of great stories at this table. Eric Lingerman going for his third WPT title. That would tie him with Gus Hansen as the winningest player ever on the World Poker Tour. The Grinder going for his second title. Finished second a week ago back at the final table again tonight. Everybody else trying to grab their first, make their name on the World Poker Tour. Action on Amnon. He folds an A7. Stewart folding 8-5. Make it 120. To Round to Eric. He's got King Queen of Spade. Going to make it 120,000 to go. Grinder going out with 8 3. D'Agostino quickly out. Now, around to the amateur, Josh Spiegelman. Call. He's got Ace 10. He's going to make the call here. What's the total? total 90 more thousand to call. Well, he's an amateur player. Has a real job. Human resources consultant. And he's only been playing poker for two years. Let's see if he gets lucky here. Flop comes Jack, six deuce with two diamonds. Action is on Josh. Flop helped neither player. Now, Eric Klinger has been watching this guy for a couple of days now. He's known as a super tight player. He checks here, and Eric checks right behind him. A little surprised that Eric wouldn't take a stab at that pot. But well, he gives a little respect to the amateur player. There's the turn. It's a three helping neither player. And now once again on Josh Spiegelman. Oh, look at this, Vince. He just has ace high. He's reaching for chips here. He says, e Dog, you might be former WPT player of the year, my friend. Yeah. But I'm sitting here at this final table, and I'm betting 125000 Nice bet. Now well, Eric's going to have to lay oh, it down oh. here. Yes, he is. Now, even though Josh had the best hand with ace high there, Still, nice play by him to bet on the turn. Well, he's an interesting guy. There's a quote about him. He says, I'm just a regular guy who wants to play poker with the best in the world. And he's doing that here tonight. He's doing it well. You can enjoy playing basketball and get to play Michael Jordan. You have no chance. In poker, you can beat the best player in the world. A regular guy like me who has a corporate job can win a satellite and hear him at the final table. Josh Spiegelman, nicely done, 45 years old. He's a human resources consultant and a math expert. Vince, he can put that math to good use here. He got into this turn for a $1,000 satellite. He could cash out over $1.1 million. All right, action on the grinder. He's got the suited connectors again, 980 clubs this time. And he has raised up to 87,000 with it. D'Agostino out. Josh out with queen three. Over to Amnon. He lays his hand down. And now Stuart Patterson with Dolly Parton nine to five. Can't play it. And look at this. Eric with king four. ten in the big blind. He's going to bump it up. Well, folks, you're getting a glimpse of why he's a former WPT player of the year. Not very many people would raise it out of the big blind with king ten. Well, the grinder now has to make a decision. He's got position on Eric. 
Which is the best seat he could be at this table, I believe, sitting behind the chip leader, the most experienced player at the table. He's got a tempting hand, nine, eight of clubs. But do you want to get involved with him on this hand or wait for a better spot? That's the question. And he's getting out his chips. Want to see how many he has left if he makes this call. He's going to have plenty left. Well, we've seen him play before. He is a fearless player. Well, I like this lay down, Vince, and I say that because why not wait for a better spot to get your money in against E Dog? That is right. But give credit to E Dog there, Vince. Coming over the top of King 10 offsuit, folks, not many players would do that in that situation. Well, we are watching superstars on the Jersey Shore. One of these players is going to take home close to $1.2 million. We're coming right back here on the World Poker Tour. Right now, my biggest problem is probably Eric Lingle because he's got a little more chips than I. I heard yesterday in one of the interviews that he wanted to play me heads up, get back for me for last year. That's fine. We'll see what happens, Eric. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour, the Bagata Poker Classic. I'm Vince Van Patten alongside Mike Sexton. Right now, our current chip leader is 29-year-old poker superstar, former two-time winner on the WPT, Eric Lindgren. He's got over 3.1 million in chips, and the action's going to be on him right now. Yep. Chip leader looks down at a 5-4 offsuit. Lays it down. Now the grinder in second chip position with about 2.4 million in chips. He's got the ace nine offsuit and he's reaching for chips, Vince. So he is going to raise it. There he goes. Makes it 87,000 to go. Johnny Daggs with the Fu Manchu look. He goes out with 10 9. The amateur Josh Spiegelman folding. And now Amnon Felipe with King Queen says he's going to make this call. Stewart out with his 10 do. So two way action here, Mike. So here we go. <clears throat> flop is ace, king, five. The grinders flop top pair. Amnon has flopped second pair and checks. And the grinder checks his two aces. That surprised me a little. He's giving Amnon some respect there. If there's a jack on the turn. Go ahead. Well, Amnon with his two kings and queen kicker. Checking again. Now the grinder's going to bet this time. Amnon with the two kings and the straight throw. Is going to make the call for 100,000. Almost beat him in the pot there. So off to the river we go. The grinder out front with the two aces. A queen comes, giving Amnon two pair in the best hand, but there's a four card straight out there. Neither player liking to see that. It goes check, check. Watch the grinder wince here at that river card. Well, you got to spread the wealth around a little bit, and that's what we just did. Amnon Felipe from New York City. He's taking his first pot here tonight. Well, when mom's in the house, you got to play your best, Vince. <laughs> My mother has on to me. It depends on how to read people. Reading people at the table is probably the most important thing, even more than cards and even more than your chip size. If I win today, I will dedicate this win to my mother and, and everything she's taught me. Well, Amnon hoping to make a big name for himself on the World Poker Tour tonight. He takes his title down. He can well do that. <laughs> nice hand for the man they call Guts. But the action is going to be on the amateur player at the table, Josh Spiegelman. Well, he looks down at ace nine of diamonds. Ace seven. So far, we've seen him play every ace nine and ace ten he's been dealt. This is going to be no exception. He's going to raise it. Makes it 87,000 to go. Amnon quickly out. And now Stuart Patterson with 10-7. He goes out. I'm just folding out. Around to Eric Lindgren with the button. He's got queen on our hearts. He says, I'm going to call it. He said, I've got the chip lead. I've got position here. I'm going to make the call with the queen nine of hearts. Grinder goes away with jack four. And D'Agostino throws away a jack seven offsuit. So Eric with queen, nine of hearts. Josh Spiegelman with ace, nine of diamonds. Here's the flop. Oh, what a flop. Both players flopped a gut shot straight draw, but Josh Spiegelman has the nut flush draw to go with his. What a huge drawing hand for Josh Spiegelman. His turn to act first. He looks up and stares right at Eric. One third. And then checks. One third. And Eric, without blinking an eye, says $130,000. Well, he's going to bet the gut shot draw here. Try to pick up the pot right here. 
Josh peeking back at that huge drawing hand. 350. And he re-raises it. He makes it 350,000 to go, and without hesitation, E-Dog calls 220,000 yeah. more with just a gut shot straight draw. I'm surprised by that, Vince. Well, it is a big pot developing here, Mike. It's the call. And I say I'm surprised because Josh is known as a super tight player. Going to have a hand in that oh, spot. Look at this card, an ace. That's going to be nice for Josh. Well, now he's got two aces to go with the straight draw and the nut flush draw. Let's see how he's going to play it here. And right now, as far as winning the pot goes, E-Dog is drawing dead. He could get a split if an offsuit seven came up. But So let's see what he's going to do here now. Taking his time, taking a deep breath here. He check raised for 350,000 on the flop and got called by E-Dog. So you gotta think he's got something. Could he have flopped a set? Does he have a better hand than mine? Did he make two pair? Do I wanna bet these two aces? Eric is just staring him down, trying to read his opponent. So what you thinking? Thinking what do you have? <laughs> you wanna tell me? I'll check. Well, Josh is going to check his hand, and wisely, Eric Langren checks right behind him. Yeah, he's not going to bite here. Going to the river. Special river card. Oh, well, boy. Queen of Spade comes off. Now this gives Eric two queens. And again, action on Josh. I'll check. Well, again, he checks. And Vince, you got to think Eric might believe he's got the best hand now. I'm going to bet 175. His opponent hasn't done anything oh, after man. check raising on the flop. He bets $175,000 as a value bet at the end. Well, he is trying to get a value bet, and he throws it down very proudly, but he's not going to like it when Josh turns up two aces. Well, Eric grinning a little bit. You know, I think he put his opponent on a straight draw and a flush draw there after he checked on the turn in the river. Felt he had the best hand with two queens. I can't blame him for betting there, Vince, but you have to wonder why he would quickly call his opponent with just a gut shot straight throw on the flop when this guy check raised him. Well, it goes to show you, even the greats make mistakes every now and then. This time that pot goes to the only man at the table who has a job, Josh Spiegel. So stay tuned. We're coming back with more exciting action from the Borgata Poker Classic in just a moment. I knocked out the TV bubble. We were down to seven-handed. And I guess I'm going to be forever known if I win this tournament as the guy who cracked Ace with Ace King. We're just so excited that Borgata can be part of what's happening with poker. We have made it as friendly as we can. <laughs> right, baby, there we go! You gotta love playing at the Brigada. My favorite place to play in the world. My home casino. It just seems like people can't get enough of it, both poker and Borgata. You see all the big guns around here, baby. Come and get us. Sweet, baby. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. You're watching the Borgata Poker Classic. Six players remain. Our current chip leader, Eric Lingren, with 2.5 million in chips. Michael the Grinder Mizraki in second place with about 2.4 million. And Vince the Amateur, Josh Spiegelman, in third place now with over 2.1 million in chips. Go one time. Right, action is going to be on Eric Lindgren. Look at this. He has King Jack says, I'm going to raise it 80,000 to make it 110,000 to go. He's got Code Jack. And he's playing it, but look at this. The grinder with five high. He's got five three. He's going to call this raise. Wow. He's going to splash around. John D'Agostino going out with six deuce. And now Josh Spiegelman with the button has a seven of clubs. He's going to lay it down this time. Amnon out. And now Stuart Patterson in the big blind with junky little eight three off suit. He's going to get out of the way and let the two chip leaders go at it here. So Eric Lingren with the King Jack, the grinder with the 5-3. Oh, this flop could bring us some fireworks. Wow. Eric has flopped top pair, but the grinder has an open end straight throw, and Eric is betting 120,000. And the grinder, well, I'd be surprised if he doesn't raise it here, Vince. That's a good flop for his hand. And a little nervous. Look at him. Look over at Eric. He's going to try to read him here. Oh, when he makes just a call. Well, he just calls. He doesn't raise there. I'll just spike this card right now. Let's see if he does. 
Nope. And eight of hearts comes on the turn. And Eric is checking the two kings this time. He raised before the flop got called. It come king four deuce. He bet and got called again. He may not be sure if his king jack is good here. Now the question is, is the grinder going to take a stab at this pot or take the free draw at the open end straight? He opts for the free draw. Yeah. He checks. He slows down, and there's the final card. He pairs up with the threes. Didn't hit it straight, though. Well, action's going to be on Eric Klingren. 230. 230. He's going to bet 230,000. And that's going to make the grinder squirm there a little bit. Well, what the grinder's thinking here is, he knows that three didn't help Eric. The question is, because Eric checked on the turn, do you put him on a pair of kings here? The grinder thinking perhaps he's got ace queen or ace jack suited, and maybe his two threes are the best hand. Well, you're right. Grinder already invested. He's going to try to figure this one out. Let's join him in his private torture tank. Well, he is reaching for chips here. Uh oh. Over 750,000 in the pot. Going to cost him 230000 to make the call. Hoping Eric will do something to tip off the strength of his hand. Notice the grinder staring at him. I'm over here, Eric. Well, Vince, because of the <laughs> check on the turn is what's puzzled the grinder here. That's a tough call. This is a tough, this would be a tough, tough. <laughs> well, Eric will not look over. Grinder trying to get his attention. Just says, send your money over, please. And he's got it in his hand. Let's see if he drops it in the pot. Oh, boy. Oh, he doesn't do it. He does lay it down, and a correct lay down it was. Eric making a great bet on the river. The grinder making a nice lay down. But you see how the grinder tortures you. I mean, he puts chips out there. He wants the reaction. He wants to see things. He wants to make you break so he can get a better read. I mean, pretty impressive. I mean, these are all little, little details of why he's such a great player. So E-Dog taking down that pot. And look, Vince, you know, the grinder still curious about what E-Dog had there. Yes, he is. But, you know, that was a nice pot for Eric Lindgren. But he actually deserves more money because of the pain and anguish he had to go through <laughs> that the grinder just, just stuck uh, it to him. Well, action back on the grinder now. Okay, he looks down at a sloppy little four deuce of hearts. Sometimes tempting. Wow, look at this, Vince. In first position, okay. he's going to limp in and call with a four deuce. He is a gambling man. And now it's on John D'Agostino. And look at this. He has picked up the Cowboys. Pair of kings. Oh, D'Agostino with a real hand here. See how he's going to play the kings. He's getting out some raisin chips. Let's see how much it's going to be. Raise it 100,000, makes it 130 to go. Josh quickly folding. Amnon. Why do you look like, always look like, like Josh someone Bull. just took your candy or something? He's the bulldog, man. I know. So, someone just beat you up in the parking lot or something. Wisely goes out. Stuart Patterson, the small blind, lays his hand down. And now Eric with a 10-9 of spades. No, he's not going to splash. So we're back around to the grinder with his junky little four deuce of hearts. And Vince, he quickly calls with it. Now, right. win or lose this pot, I don't like this play by the grinder. Calling the $100,000 raise with a four deuce out of position just doesn't make sense to me, well, but it may work for him because he's flopped the flush draw here. Yes, he has. Four to the flush, and he checks it quickly. And right now, that's not the flop you want to see if you're holding kings. Well, D'Agostino's going to bet, though, Vince. He bets 200000 Yes, he does. He bets the two hundred. And look at this. All in by the grinder. He's gone over the top. A quick all-in bet by the grinder here. And now D'Agostino faced with a tough decision for all his money right now. D'Agostino with about 550000 left. Tough call to make right here for D'Agostino. I know you got a flush draw. Wow, what poker instincts. And what if you're sitting there in the grinder seat and you're saying, man, how tough is this guy? He knows what I've got here. Might have the ace high flush draw. Then I'd be in. Then I'd have one out. Now, D'Agostino has got about $750,000 left. Could he possibly make this call with two kings? Remember, this is all his money. If he loses this pot, he's out in sixth place here. Absolutely positive that he has a flush draw. I know you have a flush draw. God. Is he going to get there, though? Well, let me oh tell boy. you. 
This is a tough call to make for all your it money, is. folks. I call. He That's makes the call, though. Call. Wow. D'Agostino reading it absolutely perfectly there. Put his opponent on a flush draw. Made the tough call with two kings. Now he's got to dodge the heart, Vince. Yes, he does. Well, folks, I'll tell you one thing. Win, lose, or draw. You got to salute D'Agostino for putting all his chips in there. That is playing the game. That's sick call. If the grinder should get lucky and outdraw D'Agostino, John D'Agostino would be our sixth place finisher here at Bogota. Well, a huge pot over $1.8 million in this pot. D'Agostino out front and holding his breath right now. Now a three comes off. That gives the grinder a straight draw as well as a flush draw. A five would make him a straight. But even with that card, D'Agostino about a two to one favorite right now to win this pot. Ryan just sits back down. He'd like to hit the right card right now oh. and knock out J Dags. He'd like a little love in here, Vance. He's looking for a heart. Will he do it? Well, it's a seven of spade. He didn't do it. Well, D'Agostino rewarded, and I think rightfully so there, Vance. I wasn't crazy about the way the grinder called the hundred thousand dollar re raise of the four dudes, but you gotta salute D'Agostino for making that great call with the two kings. Well, very solid call, but I'll disagree. This is the reason why the grinder is such a great player himself, with Gus Hansen, Negrano. These guys will play those kind of silly hands, splash around, especially when you have over two million dollars. You will speculate this time it doesn't work out. Forty-five. He played advanced, and it cost him nearly half a stack in doing so. Welcome back to the Brigada Poker Classic. The antes and blinds are going up. $5,000 antes and the blinds are going to be twenty-five and 50000 at this point. Well, we just saw John D'Agostino double up on the grinder. And Vince, he's lost about a million dollars in the last two pots, fooling around with a five, three, and a four deuce. But, you know, that's his style. He's aggressive. You just have to wonder in that last hand, had he moved all in on the flop with a flush draw, would D'Agostino called over 750000 with an ace on the board? Mike, don't hurt yourself, okay? Let's play this hand. <laughs> We're moving on. All right, back to the action. Eric quickly folds 10-4, and now Michael the Grinder Mizraki this time picks now, up a quality hand, big well, slick. He didn't have a four-deuce or a 5-3 this time. He's got big slick, and he's going to raise it again. Makes it 150,000 to go. D'Agostino out. Josh out. M9 folds. Action on Stewart. Vince, he's picked up ace-10 offsuit. He's on the short stack. Just has a little over 500,000. He's been watching the grinder raise every single pot and play every pot. Without premium cards, you almost have to think you have the best hand with ace-10. It's going to cost him $100,000 to call, but he is short-stacked. Man, you see the look in his face like he wants to go for it here. Wouldn't be a good idea because the grinder has a real hand this time. Well, Stuart Patterson. Oh, it. Oh, he is boy. doing advance. And a quick call, of course, by the grinder. Well, the grinder's going to love it. He's got his opponent dominated here. He's got ace king. He's up against ace 10. But, you know, really, I don't fault Stuart Patterson for that. He's watching the grinder raise and play every single pot. Last time he just showed down four high. You pick up ace 10 on the short stack against the grinder, you're going to play it. A million dollars difference between first and sixth place right now. Stuart Patterson. The professional, his brother Ian, up on his feet in the stands. He needs to get lucky here. You win, I'm happy. I win. Well, over a million dollars in this pot. Deuce, deuce, four, four. Grinder can get back a lot of what he blew in those last two hands by winning this hand. Let's see if he can do it. Here's the flop. Oh, a dream flop for the grinder. Oh, it's coming. Boy. King, seven, six, a spade. Uh, He's flopped top pair and the nut flush draw. I think I got about 2% chance. Queen Jack. Well, Stewart thinks he's got about a 2% chance. In fact, it's about a 1% chance is all he's got to win this pot. <laughs> <laughs> Any nine Let's go with the eight I'm gonna go with the eight nine. <laughs> eight nine. Red, eight, nine. He is in dire straits. Close to getting the shoot well, dragged over him. Oh, that's gonna do it. A five of dimes. So there you go. The grinder taking out Stuart Patterson, making three kings on the river to take it down. And the grinder was Stuart Patterson's nemesis all night long. That's gonna do it. Stuart Patterson. From Boca Raton, Florida, going to pick up $110,000. A fine effort. 
But right now, got to go back to the bowels of Brigada with a great story. Nice standing ovation for Stuart Patterson and well deserved. Had a great tournament this week. This wasn't meant to be here at this final table. So we are down to five players. Our current chip leader still Eric Lindgren. He's got about 2.7 million in chips. In second place, the amateur Josh Spiegelman. He's got about 2.2 million in chips. Third place, the grinder Michael Mizraki with 1.9 million. D'Agostino with about 1.7 million. And with 940,000 on the bottom of the totem pole right now, Amnon Philippi. Back down to the table, John D'Agostino holding jack five. And now into Josh Spiegelman, who's picked up a big hand. He's got big slick. Well, a beautiful hand. He's going to make it 150,000 to go. Amnon out. Eric quickly folds. And now it's on the grinder in the big blind. He's got king 10, and he's going to well, he's going to play. The grinder is what we call a defender. Doesn't like to give up his blind money. He is being dominated right now. It's ace king for Josh. King 10 for the grinder. Flop, no help to either player. It's come queen six deuce. Action on the grinder. And look at this. The grinder. Seemingly getting so some fine. chips out, and he's going to make a bet right into the razor before the flop. 205,000 with absolutely nothing. Well, this is a real nice bet by the grinder, and I say that because if you're sitting oh, in the other boy. seat and you don't have a queen in your hand, tough to make this call here. He took the play away from the amateur Josh, who lays his hand down. Well, he got outplayed there, Vince. The yeah. grinder earning that pot by leading out and betting on the flop, led right out into the razor and just took it down. Well, the grinder once again just speculating, just saying, you know what, if this guy didn't have a legitimate hand, if he hit nothing on the flop, I'm going to take this pot away from him just with a little muscle, and this time he's successful. My name is Michael the Grinder Mizrahi. I'm from Hollywood, Florida, and I'm a machine. I knew I was going to become great in poker. I know this is my thing, but... I Sometimes you can't believe it, you know, and I'm making back-to-back -back WT finals here just like last year. I mean, it's unbelievable. It's an incredible feeling. I don't think anybody knew he was going to be this good. He's the top three or four players in the world tournament poker-wise right now. Well, the strongest part of my game, I make huge laydowns. Only an amateur, you know, they think, wow, I got ace-king. How can I fool this? There's an ace, you know? Sometimes you just got to think before you make your move. And the most important thing in tournaments is leaving yourself with a second chance. And just how does the grinder feel about his chances for a second WPT title? I actually have a baby due tomorrow at 5 o'clock. So no matter what happens, I'm going to be a bigger winner tomorrow. Well, Josh Spiegelman said he wanted to play with the big fish. Right now, he's in with the Sharks without a cage, Vince. Yeah, he sure is. But I'll tell you something, I'm so impressed with the grinder's play. He plays with absolute reckless abandon, and that is correct. But I'll tell you, you're supposed to play this way. If you want to play at a big level, this is the way to play. However, most people get tight because of the money. He plays like it's a $100 home game. Anyway, action's on, Eric. Lays down the ace eye under the gun. All right, and it is on the grinder. He's got a suited connector, 6-5 of diamonds. He makes a call. Well, we know he loves those suited connectors. Just calls this time with it. D'Agostino's got the queen eight of diamonds. He's also calling. He's on the button in position. And Josh Spiegelman with a nice hand. King, queen of clubs. Well, the kind of hand some people might raise up after a couple guys limped in, but Josh opting to just call. And Amnon with King Jack checks. So four-way action here. Here comes the flop. Well, it's king nine nine with two diamonds. Oh man! Wow, two players have flopped top pair. <laughs> two other players have flopped a flush yeah, draw. Let's crap. see what happens. It's on Josh. He's got the top two pair and a big kicker, and he's going to come out and bet. Yep, he bets fifty thousand. Not a big bet. Amnon quickly calling. Well, Amnon with his two kings calls. The grinder with the flush draw calls. Now D'Agostino has a queen eye flush draw. He's going to call also, so still four-way action. Wait. Very solid pot. Anyone's game. Here's the turn card. It's a ten of diamonds. Well, both the grinder and D'Agostino have made a flush. Josh checks the top pair, as does Amnon. But the grinder's going to bet his flush. He bets 80,000. Now, there's 425,000 in the pot, so this is a very small bet, a feeler-style bet. This is spelling trouble here for the grinder, and just a slow call by D'Agostino with the higher flush. Well, the board is paired, so you're always worried somewhat about a full house. And what do you do if you're Josh? You have the top two pair 
but with the queen kicker, pretty solid. That's a nice lay down. Well, that is a nice lay down there. I think he senses one of these guys have got a flush. Something Amnon couldn't do. He's paid this off, so we're going to go to the river. Well, not a good call by him, in my opinion, here. River card and ace of spades. Helps no one. Amnon checks. Well, Grinder still got his flush. Bet's 175,000. Uh, he is just grinding himself deeper into a hole. Well, Vance, he's not overly committed himself here. I like that size bet by the grinder Dagostino here. Dagostino just calling it. Well, Dagostino afraid he might have the nut flush here. Or full boat or anything's possible, but still. Now we're on to Amnon. I guess I can't call it's you. Not this time, no. Yeah. Amnon says, I can't call if you can. So the grinder turns up the flush, and Dagostino is going to turn up a bigger flush. And that is a very big pot. Well, over a million dollars in that pot. John D'Agostino has a nickname now as J-Dags. I think we can change that. I think a better nickname from him would be like, he's like a magician type. He's like the amazing D'Agostino. That would be a better nickname yeah. for this guy. I, I agree, agree with you, man. I like that. The amazing D'Agostino takes down the pot. Five players remain. Win is going to take home close to $1.2 million. We're coming right back. Stay with us here on the World Poker Tour. Super high cash games, and I have real big swings. I mean, a million dollars is a lot, but I win or lose a hundred thousand online every day. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. We're at the Borgata Hotel Spa and Casino, Atlantic City's playground by the sea. That's right, Mike, but this is no playground. I mean, if it is, they're not playing for lunch money, they are playing for millions of dollars here. Very exciting. Let's go back down to the table. Actions on Eric. Can you please? First to make the decision, he's got a pair of fours. He's going to just call it. Well, he limps in with the small pair. Sporting now alert the media. Look at this. The grinder is going out. What's wrong with the well, one? D'Agostino, who just took the chip lead, picks up a beautiful hand, two tens. With the button. He's in position, and he's also got the chip lead now, meaning nobody can bust him on any hand at this moment. Makes it 200,000 to go. So Josh goes out. Amnon goes out. Back around to e Dog, going to cost him another 150000 with his pair of fours. And he's going to take a look at a flop in hopes he flops three of a kind. Well, they got pair over pair. Here we go. Oh, and e Dog has done it, Vance. He's flopped three fours and quickly checks. Oh, boy, he's digging the hole, putting the twigs and branches over it, waiting for his sucker to fall in. Will it be Johnny Daggs? Well, Vance, anybody in the world is going to bet an over pair with three undercards on the board, and D'Agostino does it. All in. And look at this. Eric says all in. How much do you have, Eric? Quickly, without hesitation, <laughs> he goes all in here. And you see J. Daggs squirming in a seat right now. A massive re-raise over the top, all in. Well, D'Agostino trying to figure out if he's hit a landmine here. Eight. You got to think Eric's going to try to make him believe that he's four flushing here and doesn't have a set. What is it? One, two, two. It's over two million? Well, you are right. It's over a two million dollar re-raise here. It's like just what a two, pot right? this would be. And just a moment ago, we saw D'Agostino make a phenomenal call for all his money with yeah. two kings two when there was an ace on the board. Wow. Can he possibly get away from the over pair in this situation? Wow. So D'Agostino thinks, you know, there's a possibility the guy could have aces or kings that was just slow playing me before the flop. On the other hand, he could have flopped two pair or three of a kind with this flop. At worst, a pair of sixes where he's got an open end straight draw and a lot of outs. He could have a flush draw with a lot of outs. So D'Agostino faced with a tough decision with two tens. But this is really sick. The way this hand is played, it is a laydown you can make. This is not fun when this happens to you. Well, Eric Lindgren actually hoping for the call. I'm sure he has now put D'Agostino on the over pair and wants to get the action here. This would be a monster pot. This is going to be such a good Well, you also don't want a fluky thing happen. Maybe D'Agostino had a couple hearts. Maybe he has a big pair. And you don't want him to pair up, so you want to take it now. So there's many reasons to make this kind of overraise. And just as quick as D'Agostino got the chip lead, he could be low man on the totem pole. He plays and loses this pot. Faced with a tough decision here as to what to do. 
Yeah, I'd be afraid that Eric flopped something good or that he was trapping him to start with with a better hand than two tens. Yeah, but doesn't he know that Eric would pop it pretty hard if he had queens or kings or aces before the flop? I think he's got to analyze that. Mm -hmm. I think Eric wants him to believe that he has a straight draw or the flush draw well, and ben, to pay him off. Even if he has those hands, what kind of favorite are you with two tens in this spot? Mm -hmm. Not a big one. But right now he yeah, is wincing in pain as to what to do. It's so easy to get away from that's suspicious. That's the problem with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that comes over the top for an extra $2 million, and you just have the 10s, but it's such a big re-raise. You're going, wait a second. What, is he up All to right. something? I guess you got it. Well, he does make a lay down. And that's, there's a case that I believe. How much this rabbit hunt for? Had Eric let out with the three fours, D'Agostino might have come right over the top of the over pair. And indeed, Eric Langer might have doubled up then. Well, the one that can come up a two of clubs. And then look at this, a four on the river. So it would not have helped Diggs. That's, I guarantee you. When Eric Langer sees this hand replayed, he is going to scold himself for how he played this pot. He's going to be very angry that he didn't lead out and bet on the flop where he might have trapped D'Agostino in this pot. I think he had the aces, man. All right. With that, the antes and blinds going up. $10,000 antes, blinds being 40 and 80. Five players remaining. Action's going to be on the grinder. Michael Mizraki, he folds a king seven. Speaking of speeding up the game, blinds and antes will do that. And now it's on John D'Agostino. And he looks down at a pretty big hand. Ace, queen, offsuit. Yeah, got a nice hand here. He's going to come in for 240000 Josh with 7-5. Can't compete. He goes out. Amnon out as well. Now we're around to Eric Lindgren in the big blind. He's got a nice hand, two nines. Well, rather than raise it, he's just going to make a call here. Wants to see a flop before he makes his move. And he's going to make the call with the two nines. Doesn't come back over the top. Wants to see a flop first. And two over cards out there in the flop. It's come King 10-6. 320. And Eric with just the pair of nines. He's going to fling away. Bet $320,000 wow. into the razor. <laughs> a strong play when there's two over cards on the board and your opponent raised before the flop. How does he know? And look at this with an inside straight draw. D'Agostino not wanting to get pushed around. He's going to make this call. Wow. This is a bold call here by D'Agostino. Maybe he suspects larceny by Eric. Maybe he figures he can take the pot away from him later on. Let's see what happens. Oh, man. Eric hit three of a kind. Well, he has made trips here. His problem is there's a three-card flush and two potential straights on the board. But the good news is D'Agostino was just sticking around for fun. So even though it looks like the joker for Eric on the surface... Underneath it all, could be a dangerous card to him. He's going to check it, in fact. Now, well, D'Agostino just with the ace-queen, remember. 600. John D'Agostino is going to come out and bet $600,000 with just ace-high. Now, well, Eric Lingren got to try to figure out if he's got a straight or a flush here. He's just got the over pair. He's holding perhaps two aces. See what he's going to do with his three nines here. This is complete larceny by John D'Agostino, the 23-year-old. Taking a stab here, sensing a little weakness. But we know, of course, Eric's hand improved. Well, Eric has got three nines, but you're not all that confident about it. Believe me. There's potential straights and flushes on the board. And don't forget about the perception of D'Agostino. Very solid and tight. Well, I can't see Eric just calling this bet, Vince, because his opponent could have a straight draw or a flush draw. But if you're going to play it, it looks to me like you got to put some chips out there. These are the same two guys that just clashed the last hand. I'm sure Eric's not thrilled with the way he played the three fours in the last hand. Let's see how he plays the three nines in this one. He's taking his time. It's a $600,000 bet to him. He's got about $2.2 million in total money. All in. Well, he's going all in here, Vince. He's done it. 
He's pulled the trigger, and there's no way D'Agostino can make this call with Ace High. That's well, impossible. He doesn't even have a diamond. Those are the two words he just didn't want to hear. Uh, yes, and he lays it down. The two words he did want to hear is take it. Unfortunately, the two words he heard were all in, and therefore he's got to go all out. Eric E. Dog Lingren taking down a nice pot there. And that's a pretty big disaster for John D'Agostino. Vincent back to back hands. He's lost the trips both times by Eric Lingren and nearly $2 million worth of chips in the last two pots. Lots of flip flopping going on here. Stay tuned. We're coming back with more exciting action from Bogota in just a moment. The reason I'm probably a good poker player is I hate to lose, so I will find a way to win no matter what. Welcome back to the Borgata Poker Classic. I'm Courtney Friel, and here are some of the highlights so far. From the opening bell in Atlantic City, WBT champion Michael the Grinder Moose Rocky came out swinging and knocked out Stuart Patterson with a one-two punch. 22-year-old pro John D'Agostino fought hard. Yes, you got it. But lost the chip lead to a relentless former WBT Player of the Year, while a newcomer and a seasoned pro carefully picked their spots. Now, four heavyweight pros and one talented amateur remain at Borgata, slugging out the prestige of a World Poker Tour title and a $1.1 million first prize. We are down to five players, and right now, Eric Lindgren, former WPT Player of the Year, has about $4 million. The Grinder has about 2.7. D'Agostino with about a million. Amnon Felipe with 9.10. And Josh Spiegelman, 835,000. Still anybody's game, but right now, Eric E. Dog Lindgren has widened the gap by winning the last couple pots. And Vince, he's starting to take command here. All right, back down to the table. Action on John D'Agostino. Okay, so D'Agostino limping in here with the queen nine of spades. Josh quickly folding his 6-3. Amnon out. Eric Lindgren calling out of the small blind here. And the grinder with 6-4 says, let's go. Here's the flop. So we've got three-way action between the three big guns here. King eight deuce. No one hitting on that flop. Well, Eric's flop bottom pair. He checks. The grinder checks. And D'Agostino's checking the flush draw here, Vince. Comes the turn card, the king of hearts. Eric is going to quickly check it with the deuces. And look at this, Vince. The grinder reaching for chips. Yeah. He doesn't suspect these guys are going to anything. He's going to bet a 6-4 offsuit here. Bet's 155000 well, you got to respect this man's imagination. Well, he's got the worst hand by far out of the three. He's got 6-4 offsuit. Well, you just wonder if D'Agostino is going to buy into the fact I don't believe this guy's got a king, that's for sure. But what's he going to do with his flush draw? Probably wish he'd bet on the flop now. Come on, Lynn. But John D'Agostino coming over the top with the four flush. Wow. And quickly Eric folding, as does Michael Mizraki, the grinder. Vince, as you know, poker is all about making the right decision at the right time. Well, that is very deep, my friend. However, you know, if you take too much time, a player could call the clock on you. And in this week's WPT Academy, Courtney Friel shows us why many players will call the clock on you. Call, raise, go all in. Tough decisions to make with millions of dollars on the line. And even tougher when someone tells you you only have 60 seconds. Put the clock on Every aspect of psychological warfare going out here at this final table by Tony G. I call a clock on people all the time. I call the clock on them so it makes them make impulse decisions. Good call. But you're usually wrong. Bye bye. <laughs> Most of the time when someone calls a clock on you, they're right away. They're trying to upset you. Look at this. Antonio has called the clock on him, Vince. He's had enough of this. He wants to speed up this decision. And with me, it doesn't work because nothing phases Bill Gates. I think uh, calling the clock for the most part is a pretty classless move. Roland, I've only been thinking for 15 seconds. Is that really fair? Sometimes you need to think it over for two or three minutes, and I think you should be able to do that whenever you need to. One minute. For me, calling the clock on person is no problem because I like to play fast and I like to play a lot of hands. If I had it my way, uh, the clock would be 30 seconds. What do you think about the old clock ticking away on you? Well, 
I love the clock in poker, Vince. I wish we'd do anything to speed up play, but I don't believe a player should ever have to call the clock on another player. I believe the clock should be automatic. You should have 30 seconds or one minute to act on your hand. If you don't act, bang, you're done. Over to the grinder here. Well, he lays it down. And now John D'Agostino. All in. All well, he's in. moved all in. Wow. He sees how tight these guys are playing in his blind position. He's going to try to pick him up right here. Call. Unfortunately for him, he's getting called. Yes, he is. Josh has got King Queen. He's made this call. Josh Spiegelman has called him with King Queen. Amnon's gone out. Have sevens. Well, D'Agostino is hoping he's got a pair of sevens, so we have two over cards. As it is, he's got two live cards. Only about a three to two underdog to win this pot, but nevertheless, an underdog. The amateur with a good shot to double up right here and a healthy pot, Vince. Nearly $1.7 million in this pot. Will the amateur survive, yes or no? Stay tuned, we'll be right back on the World Poker Tour to find out. Back to the World Poker Tour, John D'Agostino, everything so flip-flopping for him right left, now. He would be lose. crippled if he should lose this flop. His jack eight versus Josh Spiegelman's king queen. Here comes the flop. Oh, oh the flop has come queen jack eight. D'Agostino has outflopped him. Well, he certainly has. He's flopped two pair. Josh flopping pair of queens, though. Well, what did you Josh Spiegelman, a little stunned there. You can look on his face and see it. Was the queen or the eight? The guy moved in with jack eight and flopped two pair to get me. It's not over yet, though, of course. Right now, Josh needs a king or a queen to take the lead. Bet 100. Let's see what comes on the turn. I want a jack or an eight if you guys don't mind. Big pot here, Vince. $1.7 million in the pot. Oh, that's well, a good the five of spades comes off. Oh, no, it only gets rid of one out. The queen of spades is The grinder folded the king of spades, so that card was out anyway. So right now, a five would win it for Josh Spiegelman, as well as a queen or the case king. Amazing D'Agostino in a good place to double up. Look at this, he did it. Well, the 10 of diamonds comes off, and that's gonna do it for the lone amateur at the table, Josh Spiegelman. The best give the guy credit. He got in this tournament on a thousand dollar satellite. Battle his way to this final table. He's going to take home nearly 150,000 for his effort this week. No, he's a very solid player. Very impressive. Picking up some nice coin. Well, Vince, when he plays poker a little bit longer, his wish to play with this the top players in the world may diminish a little bit. He's going to recognize that when you play with worse players, you're going to win more times. Well, that's true. I mean, he just says, I'm a regular guy who wants to play poker with the best. And I have to ask you, Josh, did you get your fill? <laughs> Well, Vince, that's why you can call him the amazing D'Agostino. Nice outdraw by him to take out Josh Spiegelman. Four players left. This title is up for grabs. Could this be the destiny for the young 23-year-old John and the amazing D'Agostino? Only been playing poker for three years professionally. Action's going to be on the grinder once again. Michael Mizraki. Well, he's looked down at a hand this time, Vince. He's got a pair of nines. He's going to make it 240,000 to go. He's got a quality hand, and now it's on the amazing D'Agostino. And look at this. He has got a huge one. He's got the pair of ladies. And he just won a monster pot a second ago. Now he's picked up a real Come duke. All in. And he's gone all in with it. Yep, over the top, all in. Amnon out. Eric out. And the grinder quickly calling here, and he is not going to like it. It's pair over pair, and you see the fist given by D'Agostino right there. He knows he's a four-to-one favorite to double up yet again. Oh, yeah, D'Agostino in a dominating position right now. Well, Vince, what a turnaround this would be if D'Agostino wins this pot. Just a moment ago, looked like he was going to be down to nearly 200,000. If he wins this pot, he's going to have over three and a half million. Huh? 1.2. Oh, I'm looking to fold. So we got the only way of winning. I can fold right here. 1.44 million covered. What's that? 1.44 million for John. Well, and with the 240. Grinder can't believe it. I mean, Grinder's not accustomed to picking up real hands. Does better with his junk. The grinder versus the amazing D'Agostino. Well, if the grinder wins this pot, we can call him the amazing grinder, I'll tell you that. He is up against it here. Two nines against two queens. I feel like I'm the one who has to get lucky. 
The difference between fourth place and first place, close to a million dollars. Well, what a massive pot here. Over three and a half million dollars in this pot. And a couple 20-somethings going after it. Well, here comes the flop. Oh, oh, queen right in the door. It's come king, queen, ten. But D'Agostino wins because even though he flopped three queens, if a jack comes off, he will have the worst hand. There is no safe haven in poker. <laughs> oh, man. Now I got four outs. <laughs> well, the grinder said it went from two outs to four outs. Any jack will do it for him right now. At least temporarily. Here comes the turn card. Oh, it's a queen. <laughs> well, D'Agostino has made four queens. He's going to win this pot. The amazing D'Agostino on a roll right now. And that is a punishing blow to the Michael the Grinder, Ms. Rocky. That'll teach you to play quality hands, Michael. <laughs> oh, he's going to get rid of those pairs, Vance. Go back to the five threes and the four deuces. <laughs> so the amazing D'Agostino now with a ton of chips. In fact, he is very close to being our chip leader. Well, Vince, John D'Agostino is going up and down like the roller coaster at Coney Island right now. Oh, it is true. He has bounced around more than Anna Nicole Smith in the Robus class. Oh, no. <laughs> well, it's on Amnon. He looks down six three of clubs here. Hey, Hasn't caught any cards to speak of at this final it. table. He lays this hand down. Three hundred. And now Eric Lindgren with the button. He's got a big hand, ace queen, and he's going to raise. Yep, makes it three hundred thousand to go. Right behind him, the grinder's got a pair of fours, and he says all in. Well, he does what the Costa Ricans do with those kind of hands. He moves all in with him. D'Agostino with ace six. Well, he's not going to call a raise in an all-in bet with an A6 offsuit. He lays it down. I call. And quickly, Eric Langren calls the grinder, so we got the race situation here. It's Ace Queen versus two fours. So Miss Rocky just imploding here. Do a die time, says all in with the pair of fours in a race situation against Ace Queen. Well, he's actually a slight favorite to win this pot with the two fours. But the grinder's going to have to do so if he wants to stay alive in this tournament. And it's a big difference, Vince, in prize money. The next guy out gets about 185000 The winner, nearly $1.2 million. So you could literally be looking at a coin flip for a million bucks right here. Five cards to come. Two superstars of the game today. Eric Lindgren and Michael Mizraki, the grinder. In a showdown. Here comes the flop. Well, a queen comes right on the flop. Oh, that's very nice for Eric. Well, Eric Lingren, about a 90% favorite to win this pot now. It's the four now. I have a redraw. <laughs> Not the flop you wanted to see. Top pair for Eric Lingren. Boy, right now he's got to feel like fresh coffee and a new percolator. The grinder is going to be ground out here unless he strikes lightning. It's two runners to make it straight or catches the four. Well, a five comes on the turn. The grinder is down to the river card. He must catch a four to stay alive in this tournament. A poker world giving him his last rights. Michael the grinder, Ms. Rocky, a great champion. Coming down to this card. Here it is. Oh! He's hit it! Bits. He hit the four! Wow! Oh! The grinder erupts with elation. The grinder with the best one of the year. Beautiful suck out, hitting his fours full. Well, could that be destiny for the grinder? Could he go from second last week to winning this week and capturing his second WPT title? We shall see. Stay tuned. We'll be back with more exciting action on the World Poker Tour in just a moment. Welcome back to the Bogota Poker Classic. I'm Vince Van Patten alongside Mike Sexton, and this is a wild one. Well, Vince, you could say this is draw out haven right now. We saw D'Agostino draw out a moment ago to knock out the amateur. And on that last hand, Michael the Grinder Mizraki caught lightning in the jar, hit a two-outer to stay alive in this tournament. All right, let's go back down to the table on Eric Lindgren. This time, Jack five in his hand. Nope, he's going out. Well, he's going for oxygen right now, Vince. That's what he's doing. Oh, boy. 
He's hemorrhaging now with a grinder, but 7-6 is going to make the call, but right behind him, the amazing D'Agostino. He's got big slick ace king of spades. Yep, and he's not going to limp in, Vince. He is reaching for a stack of chips here. 500. He's going to make it a half million dollars. And without hesitation, I call. Amnon goes all in with ace 10. Where was he hiding? Well, D'Agostino quickly calls him. Oh, what a time to make your move. He finally picked up a couple cards, but we know that he's a big dog at this point. Ace 10 versus Ace King. Well, Vince, after what we saw the last hand, anything is possible. That's true. And even though right now, D'Agostino is about a three to one favorite to win this pot, anything can happen as we've already seen. Ace 10, Ace King. Amnon's been battling this tournament for four days. It is coming down to this. He finally picks up Ace 10. But right now, he is very close to extinction. Well, if I was him, I'd be saying to Grinder, Grinder, you come over here. Pretend like it's you playing this hand. Maybe you'll get lucky. Guts gets up from the table. Here's the flop. It's a king, 8-3. That is big for D'Agostino, hitting his pair of kings. Well, right now, a dominating favorite, to say the least. For Amnon to win this spot, he's got to hit two diamonds, two running tens, or a running jack queen. It's gonna be like a, a Jack of Diamonds. Well, well, I know. Watch the Jack of Diamonds. Jack, jack of Queen. I bet you anything. Any, any odds on the Jack or the Queen of That's Diamonds? Right. He must catch two runners in a row to win this pot. And no, the turn cards are nine of hearts. That's going to do it. Yep. He is growing dead, as we say. Amnon Philippi, the 36 year old from New York City, out in fourth place. Not everyone has the talent that the grinder has to suck out on the river. Amnon, it was not supposed to be a fine effort. He is our fourth place finisher here tonight, and he's gonna make $185,000. Well, Vince, many would say the cream rises. The guys that have had the most experience on the World Poker Tour, the three guys left, they are the one battling out for this title and the $1.2 million. Well, it is very much up to grabs. The three guys that are left have been on 11 WPT final tables. Wow. They're all in their 20s and have all made millions out here on the World Poker Tour. Who's going to take this title? The action's going to be on the amazing D'Agostino, but this time looks at a King 4 offsuit. All these guys know. When it comes to shorthand poker, you got to step up your game because the blinds and anties come around faster. You have to widen your range of starting hands. D'Agostino doing that here. He's going to raise it with the king four. He raises to 240. Now it's on Eric. Eric with queen eight says, I'm going to re-raise. Without hesitation, he comes over the top with queen eight offsuit. The grinder disappears, as does D'Agostino. So there you see it. Bold, aggressive poker by Eric E. Doglingerin to take down that pot. Yes, it is. It goes to show you how when you go down to three-handed, you open up your game that much more. You take some more chances. It's more about playing the opponent, pushing them around. Guts will usually win when it comes down to short-handed poker. Well, that short-handed poker and heads-up poker, it's almost like a game of chicken. Whoever's yeah. not afraid to make the last bet wins a lot of pots. All right, action right back on, Eric. Let's take a look at his hole cards with the WPT cam brought to you by Budweiser. He has 10-7 this time. Well, he goes out. And Does out. lay it down. The grinder with Jack-7. He's going to limp in. And now the amazing D'Agostino sure. with a junky little three-deuce. And he's got the two lowest cards you can pick up, a three-deuce. He says, give us a flop. And what a flop for him. He's oh. flopped three threes. Star Spangled Banner going off in his head. Right now, you flop a set, how to play it. Look at this, Ms. Rocky leading right out and Ooh. betting into him. Gotta love that. Now let's see how D'Agostino plays the three threes. Will he slow play him or is he coming over the top? Vince, he is gonna raise it here. He's making it 300,000 to go. Very interesting. And by making that raise, it almost looks to Mizraki like D'Agostino is just trying to steal a pot from him. Well, yeah, because he's thinking, listen, if this guy had a king, wouldn't he have raised before the flop? And if he had three of a kind, I don't think he would have raised. He'd have slow played, so he must not have anything. That's what Grinder at this point might be thinking. Well, Grinder's problem is that he has nothing. <laughs> Got a 220 there? Yeah. That is true. Right. You can get away from the hand and believe the guy, but... No, this is the grinder. Wow, he is betting 600,000, Vince, with absolutely nothing. Well, he doesn't believe this is such a good play by Dags. Well, look at John D'Agostino's girlfriend here. That's Maria Lina. She can't believe what's going on here, but little does she know her man is in total command of this hand. He's the one that's got the three threes. 
She's sitting up there with D'Agostino's mother, Janice, his father, John Jr., and his grandfather, John Sr. They're all here watching, and they're all holding their breath right now. Well, John D'Agostino put the big piece of cheese on the rat trap. And guess who fell in? The grinder. Oh. See how D'Agostino plays it. He just calls here. Okie dokie call. He's hoping the grinder's going to continue to fire at this pot. And D'Agostino's family, very worried, but they don't have to be. Here comes the turn He cut. is on cruise control in this hand. Well, the four diamonds comes off. Well, the grinder checks here. Say, hey, you're going to earn some more money. You better do the betting. Well, Vince, the grinder has made his move. He made his attempt to win this pot by leading out and then re-raising with absolutely nothing. But once he got called, when it comes king 3-3, three, three, chances are he's going to be done with it. Now look at this. It's a half a million dollar bet. Yeah. Well, there's no way Grinder can call this bet. He could make a fatal error and come over the top. Anything's possible with the Grinder. Well, if he does that, Vince, his chips are going to get grinded up, I can tell you, because D'Agostino is going nowhere with the three threes. Well, D'Agostino, look at he finally goes away, but D'Agostino made the great play by raising with the three of a kind. He did not do the obvious. He didn't play it slow. He had Grinder completely baffled. Grinder saying, if you had a king, you'd have raised before the flop. If you had three threes, you wouldn't have raised me, so I think you have your beat. I'm going to take a stab at this. Totally worked for D'Agostino. I would agree. It fooled the Grinder into thinking D'Agostino was just making a move at that pot, and the Grinder put in 600,000 more because of it. Well, we have three great young players. This is a lot of fun. These are phenomenal poker players, all three of these guys, all of them in their 20s, all of them millionaires out here on the World Poker Tour. The rich are trying to get richer. Don't go away. We're coming back with more on the World Poker Tour. Well, I got to say, this is the most interesting final table I've ever been on. I have all my friends on the final table. It's like we're playing like a, a home game almost. I wouldn't call the competition friendly. Like I said, we're all friends, but uh, I'm looking to break everyone. I think like, even on day one, we were talking trash, but of course, we're kind of kidding. Yeah, it's, it's slightly joking. <laughs> well, there's no friends in poker. That's from number one. But today, we just fight. We try killing each other. Welcome back to Atlantic City, the Bergata Poker Classic. I'm Vince Van Patten alongside Mike Sexton, where three players remain. Right now, our current chip leader, John D'Agostino, with a little over four million in chips. In second place, Eric Langren with about 2.8 million. And Michael the Grinder, Ms. Rocky, in third place with a little over 2.6 million. Anybody's game, no doubt about that. Let's go back down to the table on the amazing D'Agostino. Peeks down at a queen eight offsuit. He's gonna lay it down. Eric Lingren out of the small blind looks at ace high. He's got AC Ducey. See what he's going to do. 300. He's going to make it 300,000 to go. Into the grinder who has king three of spades. Let's see if that'll shake him. Not quite. Well, he's got position on Eric Lingren. He likes to see a lot of flops. So it's ace deuce for Eric, king three for the grinder. And the flop comes jack 5-4 with two spades. Eric has a wheel draw, as we say. The grinder has a flush draw. Yeah, he's got four to the flush. Yet both players check. Grinder taking the conservative route here. With the turn. And the queen of spades comes up. And notice what's happened now. Eric Lengren has the nut flush draw. He has the ace of spades. But the grinder has a king high flush. Well, that's not going to slow down Eric. On the come, he's betting 240,000 into the grinder. And look at this. Because the grinder did not bet on the flop, there's no way Eric is going to put him on a flush in this hand bet. He says he's going to raise this. Well, let's see how much he raises it. This could spell trouble for E-Dog here. Even though he doesn't have a hand, he has a big drawing hand. Well, well that's a half a million dollar raise into Eric Lindgren. Well, let's see if the camouflage check on the flop is going to help here. What is E-Dog going to do now? You're just not going to assume the guy's got a flush just because the queen of spades popped out there. And remember, no matter what the grinder has, Eric knows he's got outs to win this pot because he has the ace of spades. Eric, he don't win. Trying to figure out.
figure out what to do. You better be a little careful here, Vince. Well, he's let the push around his little buddy that sucked out on him a few hands back. Well, he's not going to push him around this end. Well, we know that. Small and and he's call. going all in right here. And he gets a quick call, of course, from well, the grinder. Of course, the grinder quickly calls him with a king eye flush. Eric is not drawing dead. <laughs> Give me the, the if little a spade back. comes up, he will win this pop with a larger flush. But right now, he is in bad shape. Over a four to one underdog to stay alive in this tournament. He has you. He does, yeah. What do you have? Uh, all one set up by the slow two, play by the two, grinder two, after hitting it. He is going to get paid off unless a ridiculous card comes out. Well played. And that can happen because we've seen it before tonight. Well, maybe it's my turn. Eric Lindgren hoping and praying for a spade. Here we go with the last card, the cash card. Will he suck out? Well, it's an eight of clubs. He didn't do it. The grinder sits back down, and his friends and family are going berserk in the crowd. Vince, here's a guy that finished second last week on the World Poker Tour, and he just took one large step toward capturing a title tonight. Well, Eric Lindgren stun gunned with that hand. His third WPT title just slipping away before our very eyes. Well, you're right, Vince. He was a star quarterback on a high school football team, but right now he's going to feel like he's a tackling dummy. And the antes are going up to 15,000. The blinds are going to be 60 and 120 grand. The grinder with about 5 million now. D'Agostino with 4.3. And Eric down to his last 150,000. What well, makes it worse is he's got 120,000 out there in the big blind. Eric's playing it blind. So he's only got a few thousand left. Eric says, I'm playing it all in the blind. Action on the grinder. I'm not going to look at this. Is the grinder picking up a pair of sixes. I call. And normally might raid in a three handed game, but in this situation, you're going to allow the other guy to come into the pot. Well, because right. in truth, I one of them. you don't care if the other guy knocks out Eric right now because you move up over 300000 in real money and have a shot to play for this title. Well, he is called in D'Agostino with a king six. is going to be in as well. So two guys ganging up on the one. Will he be able to eject him? Well, the one I looked at is not bad. Three-way so action <laughs> and Eric. <laughs> Look at the full sweat. I wasn't sure if you said one. Or... Feeling like roadkill and the buzzards are getting restless. Well, he's got a chance to triple up here to take the first step back. Let's see if he can do it. Flop comes ace, king, seven. John leads right out in bed, 75,000. No. Well, he's got to have a hand to do that. He's got the two kings. And his Rocky out, so look at this. Well, Eric Lingren is going to have to hit two runners to win this pot, whether it be two cars to make a straight, two cards to make trips or two pair, or two diamonds to make a flush. Otherwise, it is happy. Trails back to Vegas for Eric. Let's see the turn. And he gets the diamond. The diamond comes off. Well, he's got the flush draw. That's right. So at least he's got a flicker of hope here, Vince. It is not over. He can catch a diamond and stay alive in this tournament. Let's see if he gets it. No, not to be. Well, he needed a diamond. He didn't get it. Tennis page comes off. It hugs all around. These guys totally respect each other. They love to compete. They love to battle each other on the green felt. And Eric Langren, two-time winner on the World Poker Tour, is going to have to wait a while to get that third WPT title, man. We are down to two players at the Brigada Poker Classic. And first, we're going to have a money presentation. And out come the Borgata Babe, Vince, with the cash. Easy, Mike, easy. Oh, boy, I'll tell you. Borgata must have their own line of underwear, Vince. These are some Borgata babes, I can tell you that. Uh, they come out with the Ooh. chips and the beautiful face. Oh. Life is good on the World Poker Tour, folks. Well, the Borgata babes are about to unveil the surprise that the winner's going to get in addition to the cash and the entry into the WPT Championship. Here it is. And here it comes, folks. There it is. Wow. A brand new Cadillac Escalade, courtesy of Borgata. And look who's in the back is Doyle Brunson. <laughs> What a tremendous gesture on the part of the Borgata. A new car as well as close to $1.2 million. Who's going to take the title? Oh, We're coming right back here on the World Poker Tour. Welcome back to the Borgata Poker Classic in Atlantic City. I'm Vince Van Patten alongside Mike Sexton. And the macho match is about to begin. Well, right now, 
Our chip leader is Michael the Grinder Mizraki with about 4.9 million. He's up against John D'Agostino, who's got about 4.6 million. Very close in chip count. Anybody's game from here. And incredibly, the Grinder, who finished second last week on the World Poker Tour, going for a WPT title tonight. All right, let's go back to the table. John D'Agostino, action on him with the button. Let's take a peek through the WPT hole cam brought to you by Budweiser. Oh, it's a jack deuce of clubs. He's in position. He's going to make a call here. Trying to see a flop. And, and the, the grinder, grinder says, okay, let's have one. Grinder's got 9-6 off suit. Well, flop is ace-king-9. The grinder checks his two nines. And D'Agostino bet 120,000. And look at this, the grinder coming over the top. Well, this is just poker instincts and poker savvy events. He bets 240,000 on bottom pair because he realizes had D'Agostino had an ace or a king in his hand, he would have raised pre-flop. What can you say about this guy, man? It's going back to back weeks, going to finish at least second in consecutive weeks on the World Poker Tour. I mean, it's just truly That's incredible okay. to get through fields of about 400 players each week to accomplish that feat. I mean, all you can do is stand up and just salute this guy. That is incredible. Just amazing for this young superstar poker player. Back on the grinder, this time looks down to King Nine. 300. And of course, he's gonna go up. He's gonna raise to 300,000 to go. And those king high is a favor over random two cards, but little as you know, D'Agostino has an ace high and has the best hand. He's not going anywhere. He has called this. So it's D'Agostino with the ace deuce. He's taking a little more conservative route than Eric did with his ace deuce when he got broke with it a moment ago. Let's see what happens. The grinders flop top pair. D'Agostino has flop bottom pair. D'Agostino checks. 500. And notice the grinder is leading right out. He's not checking, raising. He's not fooling around. He's betting 500,000 here after D'Agostino checked to him. Not trying to trap him at all. Now D'Agostino has bottom pair and is going to be on a guess whether Grinder has a hand or he doesn't. Well, he has called the half a million dollar bet. Well, so far he's guessing wrong. Now his problem is going to be what's he going to do on the next street and the next street if his opponent bets. Well, this is developing to be a big pot. Here comes the turn. He doesn't believe the Grinder. Can he suck out on him? Not there, he doesn't. Well, the three of spade comes oh, off. Gosh. And D'Agostino checks. The grinder bets one million without hesitation. Oh, that's going to stick it into the amazing D'Agostino. He's got a straight draw and a pair of deuces. Well, he's got to figure out if he thinks he's got the best hand right now. If he thinks the grinder's making a move on him or might have some type of diamond draw. Now, don't forget D'Agostino crippled him earlier because the grinder was betting with a four flush and he saw through it. This time, the grinder going a different route, betting a solid pair of kings. Well, Vince, here's the problem. When you call a half million dollar bet on the flop with bottom pair, now you check on a turn and your opponent bets again. What do you do now? Oh, he's gonna lay this one down. He gets out of the way. But that's after he gave away a million dollars by calling on the flop. And there you see the grinder's mom, Susan, in the crowd, along with grinder's brothers, Eric, Robert, and Donnie. They're all here rooting him on tonight. The family that grinds together stays together. They are one big poker family. Well, I'll tell you what the grinder's doing. He's grinding out a big paycheck every week on the World Poker Tour events. He finished runner-up last week in Tunica. Tonight, he's got a shot to take this title. Well, Michael the grinder, Ms. Rocky. Taking charge in this as a battle, Vince. He's won the first two pots. Well, it goes to show you fearless, aggressive play by the grinder. Just grinding his opponent away here. Action on D'Agostino. This time has 10-6 of hearts. Well, so far, every round of this heads-up battle has gone to the grinder. But D'Agostino is going to try to take one down by raising it with a 10-6 here. And he goes up to 300,000 to go. And now it's on the grinder. He's got queen three. See what he does? No. Well, he's going to lay it down. He's got over a two to one chip lead. Doesn't want to jeopardize any chips foolishly now. And it goes to show you aggression does pay off. And one of these guys is going to get a huge payoff of $1.2 million. Stay tuned. We're coming back for more in just a moment. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. 381 players started. We are down to these two. 
And right now, Mizraki has about 6.5. D'Agostino with about 3 million. Let's go down to the table. Well, he looks down at a 9.8. He's going to make a call. Limps in on the button with it. Now John D'Agostino. Well, he's got the 7.4, and he says, give us a flop here. So a couple junk hands going to do battle. Here we go with the first three. Well, the flop is ace, eight, seven. seven. The grinders flop middle pair. D'Agostino has again flopped oh, bottom pair. And D'Agostino has checked. Miss Rocky coming right out and betting with the eights. Well, That's it's a case of neither player raising before the flop. You're not going to put the other guy on an ace. So D'Agostino is making the call with bottom pair, as he did a moment ago, and it cost him then. Let's see if it cost him now. And here's a six on the turn. Well, six of diamonds comes off. Sort of a scary card for both players. Possible flush draw out there. Both players have a straight draw, but believe me, D'Agostino does not want to catch a five because the grinder would have a bigger straight. But John D'Agostino first to act. He's going to stick in the chips first with $300,000. Now he is putting the grinder in a precarious position, Vince. Well, he's making the call, and what a call it is, folks. Potential flush, potential straight on the board, and you've got middle pair. Tough to call a bet in that well, spot. Well, the river card comes up helping neither player. We are back to D'Agostino again. King helping neither player. Well, D'Agostino did not like getting called on the turn. He goes, check, check. The Griner's going to win this eight pot nine, with two eights. Eight, and nine. once again, Vince, credit this pot to the poker savvy of Michael the Griner, Ms. Rocky. Not easy to call a bet on the turn with just two eights there. Well, I guess he figured that if he was four flushed after the flop, he'd have raised it. He'd have taken a shot heads up. So well figured out hand by the Griner. Well, what a player this guy is. I mean, truly, folks, you're looking at one of the best no-limit players in the world, even though he's only 25 years old. He could do something tonight we've never seen on the World Poker Tour. A guy finish second one week and win the very next week. Well, it's like he sees through the cards. Just incredible. But right now, right back on John D'Agostino. This time with a 6-4 offsuit. Going to cost him a little money to call. And he's going to raise it. That's right. And the potty's won in this heads up badly. Raised with a 10-6. He's going to try to force the action here and raise it with a 6-4. See if it works for him. The grinder right behind him has queen five of diamonds. Well, Vince, I'll tell you, many people would lay down the queen five when the guy raises it on the button, but they're not the grinder. <laughs> He's going to stick around, see the flop. So both players hoping for a flop here, and the grinder flopping top pair again. And the grinder went all in with the top pair, and of course... John D'Agostino has to go out, well, dejected. That, that's how you shut out the flush draws, folks. You move in on your opponent. No one can call with a six-high flush draw. Uh, just incredible instincts by Michael the Grinder Ms. Rocky taking another pot, grinding away D'Agostino. Well, as you can see, the Grinder, with most of the chips now, has over seven million in chips. D'Agostino with about 2.4 million. Blind still 60 and 120,000 action on the grinder this time. Jack six in his hand. Well, that just shows you the grinder loves to play any two cards if he's going to play this hand. <laughs> oh, yeah. And he definitely is going to play it. He limps in right. with the Jack six Check. offsuit. And John D'Agostino right behind him with King 10. Says that's good enough. Let's see the flop. I was a little surprised D'Agostino didn't raise there. And look at this. The grinder has flopped two pair of oh. D'Agostino checks the gut shot straight draw. And the grinder not doing the obvious. He's going to bet a little something, 120000 Not going to play it coyly. Well, it is the minimum bet, but still, you're not going to throw that away for 120000 here when you have a gut shot straight draw that could give you the nuts. And he gets the amazing D'Agostino to call for the 120. Here's the turn is of deuce of spades. D'Agostino quickly checks it. Well, and again, no slow plan by the grinder. He's betting 425000 I'm all in. Call. 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 Well, D'Agostino tried to make a move. He went all in. Grinder quickly called him without hesitation. And right now, D'Agostino must a catch a queen to stay alive in this tournament. If he doesn't catch a lucky lady, he's going to be our runner-up. And Michael, the grinder, Ms. Rocky, will capture his second World Poker Tour title. Just an incredible feat for this young 25-year-old, but it's not over yet. Well, 
D'Agostino marching with two left feet in this heads up battle, but it's not over. He can catch a queen and win this pot and get right back in the thick of things. He's looking for a lucky lady. Can he get it? I need a lot of help. All going to come down to the river. Well, there you see the grinder's mom and his fans holding their breath. They know he's one ounce away from capturing his second WPT title, and he's done it. Yeah. Ted comes off. Grinder's two pair wins this tournament. <laughs> Michael the Grinder is Rocky in the mosh pit with his friends here at Pagata. Well, there's all his brothers, his friends, his mom. The Grinder is the man tonight. He just dominated for you to take this title. A guy finished runner-up last week on the World Poker Tour, comes back this week and captures the title, and next week he goes to LA to defend the title he won last year. What more can you say about the grinder? 25 years old. Folks, you're looking at a superstar in the poker world. Final table I ever played. And all my friends, at all my friends at this table, it felt like like I was playing a home game. And everyone was so great. The crowd, thank you very much, and thanks for that escalate. And and I want to say uh, tomorrow my baby's due, my girl's due, so it's even a bigger present tomorrow. So I'm really really happy right now. And, uh, I have a the only thing they forgot, they forgot, they forgot two car seats for both of my kids. <laughs> Hey, look, you just won over a million bucks. You can put those on yourself. And now, as a custom on the World Poker Tour, it's time to toast our champion with Budweiser, the official beer of the World Poker Tour. Well, here's to the winner of the Borgata Poker Classic and two-time World Poker Tour champion, Michael the Grinder Mizraki. Rio, Vince Van Patten, and everyone at the World Poker Tour. I'm Mike Sexton saying thanks for watching, and until next time, may all your cards be live and your pots be monsters.